This is the fifth section of uh, chapter one from the core two book on complex numbers. And here we're looking at the sums of the series. Now you would have done the sum of a geometric and uh, arithmetic series in the uh, pure year two book. Uh, here we look at the sum of uh, uh, a series of complex numbers. And uh, you can see there are two results here, which we can just quote. They don't need to be proved. So the first one uh, gives a, a finite sum. You can see um, up here, I'll just highlight it. We're only going up to a fixed number of terms. Uh, for the second one, you can see it's the sum to infinity. Now, we can only get a sum to infinity when the uh, sum of the series uh, converges. That means it doesn't, doesn't balloon and get bigger and bigger. So there is an extra piece of information here that uh, this statement is only true, the second one, when the modulus of the complex number is less than one, then it will converge. OK, so we'll just write that down. So when uh, the modulus of Z is less than one, then we have a sum to infinity, just like you do with a, a, a geometric series. You only have a sum to infinity when the common ratio is less or the modulus of the common ratio is less than one. This is something similar. So that condition must be met for the sum to infinity to have a um, like a limit, which is this. OK. OK, this is quite a complex example. There's lots going on. There are some things that you may not necessarily think are obvious to do. So we're going to take our time, go for it and uh, see if we can do this proof, which is to show that this finite sum of one plus Z plus Z squared, so on, gives you one plus I cot pi over two N. OK, so the first thing to do or to recognize is that we are you going to be using this rule here. Yeah, because it's a finite sum, um, you can see the form that we need to have our our complex number in or complex numbers. So it needs to be W times Z to the power R. So looking at this. Since the first term is W and the second term is WZ and so on, I can see that W is 1 because the first term is 1 and Z, well, we're given that in the question, it's up here. So Z is cos pi over N plus I sine pi over N. Okay, so let's write out the uh, the sum of that and it's telling us that the sum is w times z to the power n minus one all over z minus one well we know z and w so let's substitute those in w is just one z is going to be cos pi over n plus i sine pi over n so that's z and that's to the power n, so that's z to the power n minus 1. Then the bottom is just z minus 1, so it's just cos pi over n plus i sine pi over n. So it's just substituting. Um, second bit, we can apply in uh, De Morva's theorem that basically says we can take that power and you multiply the arguments by that power. Now, because we're multiplying those arguments by n, so you've got pi over n times by n is just pi. So the top becomes cos pi plus i sine pi, i sine pi minus 1 over cos pi over n plus i sine pi 
over n. Okay. Now you may or not may not realize that this here is the number negative one. Now you may not recognize it when it's written in that form, but if we wrote it as e to the i pi, you may recognize that as Euler's identity and um, e to the i pi is a negative one. So basically that bit in the orange bubble there is negative one. So you've got negative one minus one, the top just becomes negative two over cos pi n plus i sine pi over n, okay? So we've just been simplifying uh, uh, as much as we can. Now, we probably can't simplify much further, but if I were to take this bit here and write it in exponential form, I think I'll stand more of a chance of trying to simplify it a bit further. So the bottom in exponential form would be e to the i times the argument pi over n. So e to the i pi over n. Okay, and minus one. I've missed my minus ones now. So I've got z minus one here. So I should have z minus one here. I should have z minus one here. Getting too excited, that's what it is. Z minus one here. So that minus one there. Okay, so just to clear that up, I missed out that minus one. So I put it in there, 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 and there. All right, we're ready for the next step. Now, uh, let's just run that again. So minus two over e to the i pi over n minus one. Now, we'll probably stand more of a chance of simplifying this. If I can get all of these terms in terms of e, and I can do that by choosing the right type of value to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by. And actually, this may not be obvious, but if I multiply the top and the bottom by e to the minus i pi over 2n, I will get it in a very useful form. Now, you may or may not remember, I'll put this at the top here, that if I've got z to the n minus 1 over z to the n, you might recognize that as 2i sine n theta. Now, that written in exponential form is going to be uh, e to the i n theta minus e to the minus i n theta. So I want to try and get what I've got written down here. If I can get the bottom to look like that, I'll get sine at the bottom. And if somehow I can get cos at the top, cos over sine is going to give me cot. So let's see what happens if I multiply the top and the bottom by this. Now this may not be obvious. This probably only comes with practice really when you sort of thinking about what you need to get to. So the top is going to be negative 2 e to the minus i pi over 2 n. And the bottom, if I multiply this first term by this, you add the powers. Now this power here is the same as 2i pi over 2n, and I'm taking away i pi over 2n, just leaving me with i pi over 2n. So e to the i pi over 2n, and then negative 1 times that, the stuff in green, minus i pi over 2n. Now look at that. Can you see that this matches with this so we can swap it in for 
2i sine something theta. Now, the power that I, I need needs to be in the form i n theta, and I've got i pi over 2n. And I want to work out, well, what do I need to put where theta is? So let's work out theta. So let's um, divide both sides by i. Um, let's divide both sides um, or um, times both sides by, no, divide both sides by um, n. Actually, we don't need to really multiply and divide by n. We can see that our, where I've got n theta, I can replace it with pi over 2n. So let's um, do that. Um, so where I've got my n theta here, I'm going to replace it with pi over 2n. Right, so negative 2e to the minus i pi over 2n. And then the bottom just becomes 2i sine pi over 2n. Now we're almost done here, we're not far off finishing. We just want to simplify. So um, actually the twos will cancel out here. And then I've got like negative 1 divided by i. Negative 1 is the same as i squared. And i squared divided by i is just i. So the top uh, will become um, i e minus i pi over 2n over sine pi over 2n. Told you this was a lot going on in this question. Right, we're now going to change it back to the cosine form and see what we can do. Well, the bottom is already in that form. So pi over 2n at the bottom. The top, um, so I'm going to be looking at this bit here and put that in the form uh, cos sine, sine cos. So I'm going to have an i out here. Um, there's no r, but the argument I can see here is uh, minus pi over 2n. So cos negative pi over 2n plus i sine negative pi over 2n. Now I've got two things over the same denominator and I've got this multiplied by i so let's multiply that out first. So times those both by i. So I will have i cos negative pi over 2n and then I'm going to have i times i, uh, which is going to be negative 1. So negative sine over negative pi 2n over sine pi over 2n. Now if I want to simplify it, I need to get these arguments the same. They're negative at the top, they're positive at the bottom. So, I'm running out of space, let's go over here and let's use our rules to change that. So, I know with cos, I can just change the negative straight to a positive. So, I will have i cos pi over 2n. And then the sign, well, if I change the sign of the argument, that negative is going to become a positive. So plus 
sine pi over 2m all over sine pi over 2n right and we're pretty much done now i can now cancel that down now this over this becomes i cot of that argument so i cot pi over 2m um, and then that and that just becomes one well what a mega question so we're now done that will be my final answer which is what they wanted i know i got it the other way around but who cares yeah we've done all that hard work that's a mega question a lot going on i would suggest you know you stop you go for it a few times you understand fully what's going on in that question okay so on this one um we've got um uh want to find the sum of this series here and we want to show that the sum gives us this now because i've got sine there i would probably be thinking um something like this that um z to the n minus one over z to the n is two i sine n theta and written in exponential form um that would give me e to the i n theta minus e to the minus i n theta yeah so i'd be thinking to myself can i get it written like this so i can get sine in there and i'm i'm sure i'll be pretty much uh almost done okay so um using this up here it's a finite number of terms so we're using that so the first term is w and w is e to the i theta um z is like the common ratio what are we multiplying by to get the next term well if we look at the powers the powers go up by i theta which means that we must be multiplying by e to the i theta for the powers to go up like that because you add the powers every time you multiply and uh n now that's going to be eight right so now we're ready just to uh, plug all of that into the formula so w and then e to the i theta that's said to the power n minus one all over z minus one okay is there anything we can do at the top yes uh, we could expand the brackets uh, we can also um, deal with that uh, power as well oh right and n is eight isn't it so let's replace that with eight okay so let's um uh, deal with a bit inside so a few times the power by 8 e to the 8 i theta minus 1 over e to the i theta minus 1. Now the temptation is expand the brackets. Let's just expand the brackets and see what we get. But remember, we're trying to get it into this form. So let's think carefully about what I can multiply the top and the bottom by so I can get something like that at the bottom okay so if I multiply the top and the bottom by e to the minus 
i theta over 2, I can get the bottom part to look like this, where the two powers will be the same, but one will be positive and one will be negative. So let's do that and uh, put it down here and see what we get. So remember when we multiply um, by uh, this exponential to that power, you're basically going to be adding the powers together. So think about what you get when you add those powers together. Okay, so the top, e to the i theta, if we add, which is basically take away a half of that, we're left with e to the i theta over 2. So we don't need to multiply what's in the brackets as well. And then the bottom, uh, and if we do the same thing again, uh, we're going to get e to the i theta over 2 minus e to the minus i theta over 2. Similar to the last example, what we multiplied by to get this at the bottom, you'll see it's normally the same type of thing. Right, so what does that mean? Well, if I look at the, compare this to this, I can change that for sine. And actually that will become 2i sine theta over 2. So n um, would be, um, or n theta would be um, theta over 2. So we can just substitute that in. Now if I look at the question, you can see that we've got a 4 theta here. This bit's working okay. I've got a 4 theta here. Now to get that, really in the brackets, what I need is a, a 4 theta or 4 i theta as the power. Okay, so I'm basically almost like working backwards and saying, right, I know what I want to get. So this is what I need to have in brackets. I need to have that so that I can get this. Now, if I put that in brackets, and then work out backwards what needs to be outside of the brackets. I need to have the power e to the 9i theta over 2. Now you can multiply it all out and check that it works. Um, but for us to get this power in here this needs to go out here for it to balance out okay and if you multiply out the brackets over here you will see that we get this so we're sort of working backwards in a way or saying right this is what i want to get to so let's force it to have that in the brackets so then i can make that substitution and then this is what will need to go outside the brackets so that the powers here still match up with what we've got here, otherwise we could end up expanding the brackets and not really get anywhere. Look at what you want to get to. What needs to be there for that to happen? And then that's pretty much it now. So, um, so in the, I would have, let's do it over here, I've got a bit more space. E to the 9i theta over 2. In the brackets, I will have 2i sine, and I've forced it to become 4 theta over 2i sine theta over 2. Okay, so the 2i's cancel out, and I've got the expression as required. Okay, and then part b. Um, it says let p, let's highlight it, let p equal that and q equal that. Use the answer to part a to show that p equals and find a uh, similar expression for q and 
QLP. Okay, so you may or may not have noticed that the expression we've got here is written in exponential form. If I wrote that in each one of these bits here, I could write uh, using sine and cos and the cos part of the expression, let's just write it down. Whenever we write something, a, a complex number in the, in the form with sine and cos, the cos part, so you always end up with something like this, don't you? Yeah. This part here is the real part. That will give us the real number. This gives us the uh, imaginary part, the imaginary, imaginary, let's spell it correctly, imaginary part there. Okay, now if you look at what we've got written here for P, this is all the cos bits. So this is going to be the real part. of what we've got of s this over here the sine part is the imaginary part of s right so p is basically the real part of s okay now we've got what s is um here right so if i this is the only part that's got like a real and imaginary part to it this and the real part of that would be cos um nine theta over two yeah so each one of these terms whenever you write e it's got a real and imaginary part bound together as one so this has got a real or imaginary part together. Let's split them up. The real part would be sine 9 theta over 2. And the imaginary part would be sine 9 uh, theta over 2, not 9 pi theta, keep saying pi. So the real part of this is going to be cos 9 theta over 2. And then you've got sine 4 theta over um, sine theta over 2. And Q is going to be the imaginary part of S. And that's the only difference is going to be it's going to be a uh, sine. 9 theta over 2. The rest is still the same. So if I want a, a similar expression for, I've done P. This is what P is here. That's P. Uh, Q is this. And Q over P, um, that's just going to be this. Divided by this. Now the question doesn't say anything about simplifying it, so you could leave it in this form. If you wanted to, or simplify it down as it does in the book, but it doesn't say, let me write that out again so you've got a bit more space. Yeah, you could leave your answer in this form. There's nothing about write, write your answer as simply as possible, simplify. So let's just leave it like that. Sign 9 theta over 2 sine 4 theta that's all over sine theta over 2 and all divided by the same thing but let's put cos there which could be simplified but I'm just going to leave it 
uh, like that. You can see the simplified version of that in the textbook, um, which I think gives you tan nine theta over two, but you could easily work that out yourself. Um, I'm sure you'd, you'd find that pretty straightforward to simplify yourselves. Okay, two quite difficult questions, I think, and quite a difficult um, chapter. So take your time, exercise 1E on pages 18 and 19.